Today we're looking at CDs, cassettes, and vinyls. I know, crazy, right? But relax, you don't want to pull something. Audio formats, specifically these ones and their history, seem to be pretty straightforward, right? You slap a thing and another thing and bada bing bada boom, you got music, right? 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 But like, have you ever stopped to actually think about this stuff? Like, which out of these is the actual best way to listen to something? Like, is one better than another? Is there a best way to listen to something? Why do people insist on giving me their mixtape? I don't want it! Will vinyl heads ever shut up? All great questions, and that's what we're getting into today. And if you end up enjoying this video, leave a like. Alright, let's get into this. Enjoy! Hey guys, welcome to EV Games. <laughs> nah, I kid, I can only dream. It's just some music store I stole from this guy. I wonder how he's doing. FBI, open up! Eh, I'm sure he's fine. I, for one, am not. See, I took the store from our friend here, but it became clear really quickly that you can't actually run a store with nothing in it. I don't know who decided that rule, but I feel cheated. But I decided to bite the bullet anyway and actually order some stuff to fill up these shelves. I'm trying to get some people in here, you know? And it should be arriving any minute now. Yep, any minute now. Okay, I actually don't know why it's taking so long, but while we wait, there's something I want to- Package for, um, user bites? Ugh, it's the same guy. Why did he do that again? Okay, whatever. Ah, it's the thing that I already mentioned earlier. Crazy how that works. Eh, it's probably nothing. Well, now I gotta sort through this stuff. And what better time than now than to really dive into this thing? Just, uh, just make sure to dry your feet afterwards. I don't want you running around the... What did I just say? Music is really interesting, but what's even more interesting is the way we take it. You sicko. Audio formats, well, what's so special about them? Well, it's the thing that connects the music people make to the masses, like you. And me, making it really easily accessible. I'd argue that's pretty important. They come in many shapes and sizes, and it's easy to forget, but we've come a long way on how we consume our stuff. But like, why? How did we even get here in the first place? I just blinked, and now I'm vibing in the Ritz car. Yo, I'm just vibing in the Ritz car. With the rise of streaming and online video, there's not much need for the relics of the past, right? If you look at something like movies, their physical forms exploded in the world, from DVD to Blu-ray, but now my copy of Click is somewhere in a wasteland. And just like them, music formats, specifically older ones, are similar, with my copy of Kids Bop 6 right next to it. But unlike movies, music and its physical forms gain a following of its own, and in the last decade, found a new appreciation for the physical stuff, not really seen in other formats. But why? What's got people collecting old stuff again? Did somebody leave an embarrassing photo in one of these things? <laughs> <laughs> Let's start off with an easy one. CDs. Don't say it. Don't say it. Please don't say it. D <laughs> CDs are compact discs, if you're one of those guys, is one of the largest forms of physical media, if not the largest. You can fit everything on this thing. Movies, albums, my will to my future grandkids, it's all here. There's a lot of different versions of this little guy, each for different purposes, such as CD-ROMs for video games, CDR for writing stuff from your computer, but you can only do that once, so they had to make the sequel CDRW for rewriting stuff onto. And there's Video CD, which later evolved into Super Video CD, which is different from DVDs. Holy smokes! This not confusing at all. Man, that family reunion must be something. Uh... CDs were developed in a co-parenting household, co-developed by Sony and Philips, best known to me for making this abomination, but allowing this thing to happen. It sure is boring around here. CDs were monumental for the time, as it opened the doors for a new opportunity by allowing more information to be put onto it compared to disc drives and cartridges, and by the late 90s becoming the dominant form factor. But in many ways, the CD was the beginning of the end for physical formats, as during that time, something else was bubbling in the online kettle. MP3 players and its cousin Malware started hitting the mainstream, and with the rise of iPods, MP3 players, iTunes, and later the iPhone... <clears throat> who is Steve Jobs? That's it, yeah. Yeah, with all that, we would start to see the decline of the little guy, and music stores either closing up shop or just switching to a multimedia platform. In 2013, a one Kanye West would release his sixth studio album, Yeezus, with this album art, and in stores, having no artwork. The idea being, since CDs are phasing out, the artwork reflects a sort of open casket funeral for the CD. A funeral where everyone who walks by is invited? Sign me up! But okay, tell me. 
What is the weirdest CD? Like the weirdest version of a CD. I'll give you a minute. And by a minute, I mean, can you decide already? You're holding up the line. Well, how about Photo CD, developed by Kodak, intended to save pictures on it? Not to be confused with Picture CD, also developed by Kodak, to save high resolution JPEGs. Oh, yeah, we're in the money. I can only imagine that board meeting must have gone smoothly. Yes! Guys, let's do it, let's do it. Remember this guy? This is called a mini disc, also developed by Sony, and was released in the 10th anniversary of the CD. Also, if you're wondering, you don't, you don't open them. Just, just put it in. They did pretty good. And by March 2011, Sony had sold over 22 million mini disc players. Back when Sony still had stock to give. Now, alongside CDs was something else that was around just as often. That being the cassette tape, predating the CD but released after the vinyl. The compact cassette tape was created also by Philips. Damn. These guys really have their hands in everything, except the Phillips head screwdriver. What a waste. Starting out, these things could pack a whole 45 minutes of runtime on one side. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Slow it down there, Speedy. You don't want to break something. A lot longer than vinyls at the time. And although easy to forget nowadays, these guys were pretty impactful and helped shape how we listen to music going forward, even till today. But how did they actually do that? Well, check this out. The main appeal came in their size, being significantly smaller than anything else, also being easier to manufacture and record onto. And with the Infinity Stones collection, they began their integration into everything. Boom boxes, cars, computers, answering machines, my hospital bill. Everything was getting the treatment. The cassette was really good at recording stuff on it, and its ease of use allows peeps to take their favorite songs off albums and make their own playlists. And from there, you can force feed your favorite songs to your friends. Sound familiar? No? Oh, okay. This concept alone is still running the music biz, even now with streaming. The idea of making your own playlist stems from this. Isn't that crazy? Like, the stuff is so commonplace now, you know? You never really think about it. Even the name, Mixtape, which we use to talk about non-albums. I'm looking at you, Aubrey. Yeah. Well, you want to put a mix of your favorite songs on a tape that you can guilt people into buying on the street? Well, there you go. It also helped kickstart a ton of piracy, but I, I, I don't look at that. And now, the thing people mistake for plates at Macklemore's thrift shop. I love vinyls, man. Just the concept of them is so interesting to me. And seeing how they work always blows my mind for some reason. So you see these little grooves you see around the disc? That's actually where the music is stored. And how it plays is, when the record is spinning on a turntable, the needle fits inside these grooves and vibrates in such a way that it sends that signal up your needle, into your player, and out through your speaker. Like what? How do you even come up with that? I get happy whenever I toss my garbage and it goes in on the first try, let alone coming up with this thing. Music records have actually been around for a long time, being traced all the way back to the 1800s. Old heads are literally shaking right now. Back then, people were still trying to figure out how to actually put something onto something and be able to play it back. The material used to make records always varied from make it or maker, but vinyls as we know it didn't really start kicking in until around 1940. It wasn't until 1948 where Columbia Records stepped up to make the first ever vinyl record made out of you know, chocolate. The first vinyl record, appropriately titled Columbia ML4001. Catchy. With vinyl material being physically stronger and easier to make records with, it wasn't long until they became the go-to format for everyone. The only issue with them is they tend to scratch and warp easier under long heat or bad conditions, but honestly, I take that over playing with glass any day. The speed in which it plays is measured by how fast the record is spinning in a given time, in what's called RPM, or revolutions per minute. That's a lot of revolutions. The industrials got nothing on this guy. As time went on and other formats like CDs and cassettes took over, vinyl slowly started fading to black. Some companies considering retiring it altogether. But in the late 2000s, the unthinkable happened. The market crash? Obama winning? No. The real winner of the late 2000s, vinyl coming back from the dead. The ritual worked. Some places even having it more popular now than it was back then. There's a couple reasons why. Such as they're seen as more durable than other formats, the packaging is a lot nicer than others, making the album art more visible so I can really see it. And the quality is, although not as clean as CDs or MP3s nowadays, just gives off more character with its artifacts and imperfections and warmth that people tend to like stylistically. Those weirdos. And just like that, my record store is complete. Very convenient. Look at all these things. Can you name them all? Believe it or not, this is probably the part of the video that took the longest to do because, you know, drawing and shit. I mean, this is real. All this is real. Okay, thanks for watching. Subscribe!